Now we are ready to learn more about the modulations. And this is really the fun part in this synth. So we have all kinds of options here to take any of the parameters and modulate them. And we have keyboards, envelopes, LFOs, functions, random and combination of other modulators. But first let's understand how we are using all these options here. So for example, I have this default settings here and I want to modulate the position. So manually, when I press any of the keys and move the position, the waveform is just shifting from the sine to the square. So naturally, I, I would like to automate that. So I can take, for example, LFO1 and just click and shift, click and drag the position here. And now uh, immediately I can see WT1, which is wavetable 1 position, and it's been modulated by the LFO1 at 0 0.32 amount. Now I can close that and that's it. I'm modulating the position. If I want to see exactly what's going on, I can go to LFO1. I can see exactly the rate and I can see the phase and everything else. And we'll touch that very soon. So that's the basic idea how I'm setting um, a modulator to a parameter. Th there are other ways. So the more uh, intuitive way is to select any of the parameters. Let's say the filter here, the cutoff, and there is a little plus here on the right top. So I'm clicking that and I can just drag, for example, function one. Let's go to functions, function one. This is function one, just goes all the way down here. And I can just go and change that. And immediately we can see what's going on. So we'll learn later that the functions goes uh, at the uh, unipolar and I can go into bipolar later. So that's also something very, very cool. And I can also modulate other things with function one. For example, I would like to modulate the volume. So I can go to function one, just clicking here. Sorry, let's first stop that. Going to function one and I can add more parameters to be modulated by function one. So I'll just take the volume here. Very nice. And if later I want to clear and I don't want um, any modulation on the volume, I'll just click here, right clicking with the mouse, and I can see which modulators are modulating this parameter and it can just remove. Same for the position, remove, and also for the filter. So that's the idea. I can either select any of the parameters, click the plus and assign any of the modulations, or I can go the other way around, select any of these modulations, for example, function one, and just start modulating any thing at all. So one very, um, I would say, a complex kind of modulation is to have a side chain. So I can have any of these already assigned parameters being uh, modulated by a side chain. And for example, let's just side chain this by the, um, let, let's take macro one. So when I'm just moving macro one and I can first select the amount. So this means that macro one will be um, modulating the, um, the wavetable one FM amount by 71%. So you can just hear that. And you can see it all over here. So that, that's the basic idea. Let's go back to the default. And I think now let's just go over all these modulation groups. 
So starting with the keyboard. Here we can see all the parameters that are related to keyboard, like the band range. I have two octaves up and down for the band. I have the master tuning. I have polyphony. I can go from mono, legato, up to 32 polyphony. And I have glide time. Glide meaning when I strike one key and then another one, I will have a glide. And I can also uh, select always, which means that every key that I strike will have a glide between one another or just the first one. I can also select after touch related to a specific channel or as a polyphonic. We also have velocity curve and a keyboard curve. So the velocity curve is just, you know, just drag and drop. Right, I'm just dragging and dropping the point wherever. Let's just select another, another preset here. And the keyboard. The keyboard means that we are relating the velocity to any of the keys that we play, either low or high keys. Double clicking will get you back to the uh, center. Right, so this is the keyboard envelopes. Here you can see three envelopes and the first one is locked to your gain. This is the main envelope and it cannot be changed in, in, in that way. So it's just locked to our, vel uh, our velocity, our main voice. And it can be used for other purposes, but it is, it is locked pre and pre-configured like this way. So Anyway, we have attack, decay, sustain, and release, which are the normal parameters for any of the envelopes. And let's play with that. But I can also go into ADR mode, which means that I'm just um, uh, taking the sustain out here and going straight to release. Now, one other thing that we have is the way that this envelope is being re-triggered or being resetted. So um, this particular envelope is locked to our main out. So we cannot change that. We cannot change the gate here. But in envelope two, we see that we have gate source. And right now, this is the poly keyboard. And I can change that to be synced with LFO1, for example which means that this envelope will reset according to whatever is going on with LFO1. So when LFO1 completes a cycle, this envelope will do so as well. And we can, we can select any of the other modulators here, even sync that to our sequencer start or our sequencer clock and so on. So these are the envelopes and I can assign the envelopes to, uh, for example, um, our filter or to the output of our wavetable synth here and whatever. So that's the envelopes. Moving on to the LFOs, this is very, uh, I, mean, I would say, very common, very useful way to manipulate any of the parameters in a cyclic way. So, for example, I want to have our filter, and I, I've played with that before. So I can have our filter cutoff being manipulated by the LFO. So just clicking plus and let's just drag, sorry, let's drag LFO one and we already see some movement. Now, one thing that we should take uh, note here is that we can change the waveform from sine 
up to uh, uh, some other, this is sample and hold, for example, square. So we, we have all kinds of options here, somewhere between triangle and square and so on. We have symmetry, which will, we, which will just, you know, drag our signal waveform here. Let's, let's go back to sign and we can see, we can see exactly what it means. We also have a rate. That's the more important parameter here. We can set it to very fast, very slow. And we have other options here. We can say that we want to sync um, binary, which means that this is locked to our BPM. This is the BPM with triplets and dotted. We can also set it to a particular um, hertz value. And this is really cool because you can play. You can you can play with that with another modulator. So for example, I can just click here and say, hey, let's have function one modulate our rate here. And we can see that function one goes down in a certain um, speed. So let's go to function one and just let's take one of the presets here just for fun. And let's go back to our LFO and we see exactly what's going on here. Right, and we can take some, some other options here. For example, funny gates. And so on. So let's just get rid of that. And that's the LFO. So something else to, to take note. We can change the phase. I'll just go back to our default here. We can change the gate. The re-trigger here. That could be any of the other LFOs, functions, keyboards, and so on. And we can also introduce some fading. So this is really useful if I want to have the LFO kick in at a later time. So let's see how it works. Let's modulate filter one cutoff with LFO one. Next, we have an option to select unipolar or bipolar, which means that if you look at the, at the cutoff here, you can see that it goes both ways, plus and, mi uh, plus and minus. And if I set it to be um, bipolar, so, sorry, unipolar, so you can see that it goes just one way, and it goes to the plus here, and that's according to the modulation value. So if I go to LFO1, I see that this is 1. If I go all the way to minus 1, you'll see that we're going the other direction. So that's the idea here. Um, next, we have function. So function is really fun. Function is a way for us to just draw any particular sort of uh, LFO. So you can see the green dot just sliding down, and this is very very creative way to modulate any of the parameters so let's just modulate let let's take the position here again and modulate that so we'll close that we'll go to our wavetable position and take function one so first of all we can set uh, we can set the rate okay so right now the rate is half can set it to 1.8, we can have 8 to 1, and so on. We can have it, one, uh, we can have a play mode, one loop or run. One meaning we'll have just one cycle, 
and that's it. Loop will just loop endlessly and run will continue without any relation to the gate source. So if I have a loop, I can say, okay, let's reset this function according to the cycles of any of the LFOs or maybe the sequencer start or other functions and so on. So this means that our um, function will be synced to other modulators. And we can copy this particular function to any of the other functions. We have some presets ready here. Let's just select anything else. And we can go to a draw mode or exit the draw mode here. And have a look at that. We can have some curves. And we have a regeneration here. So, sort of a random regeneration. So, these are the basic ideas behind the functions. And you can play with that and get into all kinds of very useful and very creative manipulations on, on your parameters. So, this is really cool. Um, random. So we have three options to randomize these modulators. So we have Turing, and Turing means that we, we're just having random patterns here, and these patterns are being generated constantly, and they are free running at this point. So we can also have them cycle through, let's say, LFO1, and synced to any particular rate. Here we can set the rate. can see that 1 is very, very simplistic, and if we go to 10, for example, we have a pattern of 10 steps. We can flip, we can flip our patterns here. And that's the idea. So I can take um, any of these uh, random functions and just assign them to anything. So, for example, I can assign them again to the resonance, for example. Let's take Turing. And we can see that the resonance will be manipulated by this Turing function. We have sample and hold, and let, let's take sample and hold uh, instead of the Turing. We'll just right-click here, remove the Turing, and Let's see what the sample and hold does. So I'm just selecting sample and hold. And we can see, again, this is random values. And the whole idea between all these options here is what value will be generated by the functions here. And that value will be uh, modulating our parameter. So this is the whole idea. So right now our source is a white noise and we're sampling that we're sort of taking a snapshot of a moment inside that white noise and generating values from that we can ha also have some curves here moving from one uh, uh, one uh, sample point to another and we can sync that to any rate We can have binary, we can have triplets, dotted, or a particular hertz value. And again, the re-triggering of this function can be locked into our keyboards, LFOs, functions, and other random uh, functions here. Now, binary means that this is really one or zero. It's either on or off, and we can set the probability of having uh, any of the values. And we can have correlation here, which means what will be the probability of having the same note or the note after. So let's set that to our resonance. Right-clicking, remove, and let's take binary.
Right now the probability is almost 100%. And that's basically the idea here. Again, I can reset the source um, and lock it to our keyboards, LFO, functions, and other random functions. That's the idea here. Again, the basic, um, the basic uh, functioning of this is that the functions here will generate any kind of values, and these values can be used to manipulate other parameters so that's the idea moving on to combinate so combinate is pretty simple you select a source let's say lfo1 this is lfo1 working and i can modulate lfo1 with for let, let's take one of the functions so immediately we see what's happening here and we can select the type of modulation and that could be either sum difference, multiply, division, cross-fading, and lagging, so, so to speak. We have um, threshold, and we have an offset. So we can set this particular combination to anything. Let's just uh, clear what we have on the resonance. And we can take let's let's use that for the for the filter so i'll just take com com one and that's it that's the idea so last we have the macros these macros can be used to um, to manipulate anything directly or indirectly. So if we're talking about directly, I can set it, for example, for our resonance. And we can see exactly what's happening. I'm just manipulating any particular parameter. And that's just about it. Maybe one last uh, option here is uh, to have a look at the side chaining. I can use the macros, for example, with side chaining. Let's see how that works. So if I have, for example, function one, I can have function one being manipulated by macro one. I'm just clicking the side chain here, selecting, for example, uh, macro one. And macro one is right now it's zero. I can have it all the way up to one. So now whatever I'm doing with macro one, I'm manipulating the, uh, the, the wavetable position by actually manipulating, by modulating function one. So we have macro one modulating function one, which in turn modulate our wavetable position position so it's a uh, very very powerful and of course I can have um, all kinds of combinations here so this is pretty much it I really hope you enjoyed this um, series of um, tutorials and if you like it let me know and I'll see you in the next series thank you